Toyota's CEO has just sent shockwaves through the automotive world with their groundbreaking carbon-negative engine, which could spell the end for EVs as we know them. Imagine an engine that costs half as much as an EV and delivers nearly double the range, sounds too good to be true, right? But it's real. And Toyota has already put it to the test in two of their race cars with astonishing results. So why is Toyota turning its back on EVs? Could this carbon-negative engine be the game-changer that wipes out the competition? And when can we expect to see it on the market? Hey, if you are enjoying this so far, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Here's the scoop, Toyota's CEO, Koji, has officially confirmed they're developing a revolutionary carbon-negative engine that might just render EVs obsolete. He believes that instead of being stuck with overpriced EVs that leave you anxious about range, people deserve more options. While other companies are taking massive hits on their EV sales, Toyota has come out swinging with something truly extraordinary. At the 2023 Super Taikyu series, Toyota went head-to-head -head with AMG GT3S, racing two cars equipped with this carbon capture engine, and the results were nothing short of spectacular. But here's the real kicker. Toyota isn't just making an engine. They're on a mission to completely transform our understanding of fuel. Their GR Corolla H2 concept, powered entirely by carbon capture technology, marks the biggest leap forward in the auto industry to date. Toyota has been on this path since 2014, and they're not just dabbling, they're out to change the game entirely. And that first big feature? A system that captures carbon dioxide, or CO2, directly from the air as the car zooms around. Imagine that, a car that fights pollution while it races. Here's how it works, the car has these special filters and a fluid under the hood, all designed to snatch CO2 from the air. This setup includes two filters and a liquid that captures and dissolves the CO2. The first filter grabs CO2 from the air sucked in for combustion, while the second, placed where the engine gets hot, releases the CO2 it captured into the recovery fluid as it heats up. This system is a marvel because it uses the car's existing air intake and engine heat meaning it doesn't need extra energy to do its job. Talk about efficient. But wait, there's more. This isn't just about being eco-friendly. Toyota's carbon capture engines are about performance too. They're testing these engines in the toughest conditions on the racetrack to make them better, stronger, and ready for the road. Before I tell you about the crazy power figures and range on this engine, let's talk about how Toyota's alternative fuel journey has been going thus far. Toyota launched the Mirai 10 years ago. And ever since then, sales of their cars have shot up by a whopping 166%. Worldwide sales for their cars soared 166% in September, 22% over the last nine months, and 77% over the last six. And that's not all, Toyota is not just playing the game, they're looking to change it. They've got their eyes set on selling a staggering 200,000 carbon capture powered vehicles, targeting Europe and China in 2024. Toyota has also been working with gas stations all over the U.S., integrating carbon fuel lines into them. Unlike EVs, you could fill up your car with hydrogen in just under two minutes, and all at a normal gas station. Now, the biggest headline here is the range improvement. Picture this, just a few months back, this car could do 16 laps around the track before needing a refuel. Fast forward to now, and it's hitting 20 laps, that's a 25% boost, which in racing terms is huge. But how did they pull it off? It's all down to some serious brainpower and a bit of engineering magic. First up, they got smarter about measuring how much liquid carbon they're packing into the tank. Liquid carbon is a tricky thing to store, it's kept at a mind-numbingly cold minus 423, 15 degrees Fahrenheit, for the entry-level hatchbacks we're talking about. Imagine if Toyota put this engine in a sedan or an SUV, we could be looking at a range of around 800 to 1,000 miles. In earlier designs, a big issue with such an engine was the weight. I mean, even BMW made a similar car. But fitting huge carbon capture tanks that are thick enough to keep something below freezing doesn't exactly sound lightweight. But Toyota has come up with their own tank made with a composite material, which is nearly 150 pounds lighter. After all these tweaks and improvements, Toyota's big boss Akio Toyota, who also races under the name Marizo, took it for a spin and clocked in times that were two seconds faster per lap compared to earlier in the year. And it's not just because he's been practicing his driving, it's a testament to how far this car has come, morphing into something that not only rivals traditional engines in performance but also does so using cleaner, greener energy. With this tech, oil extraction is going to plummet, along with the scouring of rare metals used in batteries. 
We're talking about a seismic shift in industry standards, no more devastating mining operations, no more environmental degradation. More oil spills, just clean, abundant energy. Speaking of charging, let's roll into the saga of the poor charging infrastructure. Finding a charging station can feel like a treasure hunt without a map, even when you do find one, it might be in use, out of service, or just painfully slow. Cities and highways are slowly getting more dotted with charging points, but we're not quite at the grab a coffee while your car charges utopia yet. Now on to the raw material scarcity. Crafting an EV isn't just about sleek designs and electric motors, it's about the guts, the batteries. These power packs rely heavily on materials like lithium, cobalt, and nickel. But here's the plot twist. These materials aren't just lying around waiting to be picked up, they're finite, hard to extract, and often found in parts of the world where mining them is tangled in environmental and ethical controversies. This scarcity makes the batteries, and consequently the EVs, pricier, and it's a big puzzle the industry is racing to solve. And then there's the whole affordability drama. While there are incentives and rebates in many countries trying to make EVs more accessible, the price tag still makes many shoppers' wallets tremble in fear. Toyota is a brand known for making affordable cars, so it's easy to understand why they aren't completely on board with EVs. Toyota, observing the market dynamics, has noticed a troubling trend for EV makers, where demand is not meeting supply, leading to unsold inventory and price cuts. This impacts the economic viability of EVs especially given the higher production costs compared to ICE vehicles. For instance, the reported loss of $36,000 on every EV sold by Ford highlights the challenges of pricing EVs competitively while still making a profit. Toyota's strategy includes a diversified portfolio that comprises hybrid vehicles, plug-in hybrids, battery electric vehicles, and now carbon capture engine vehicles. Toyota has flipped the script on what we thought was possible. Engineering a vehicle that drinks gaseous carbon and breathes out nothing but a whisper of water vapor. It's not just innovation, it's a revolution on wheels. Let's talk about impact because this isn't just a win for your wallet. Imagine slashing oil dependency and kicking the nasty habit of metal mining to the curb. No need for the costly EVs, no sir. Carbon is everywhere. Easy to store. Easy to source, it's a no-brainer. And this isn't some distant dream. Toyota's already on it. Testing a water-cooled beast of an engine and teasing us with carbon-powered hot rods. So what do you think? Are most EV owners happy with their EVs? Or is having more options a better idea? Let me know down in the comments below.